Hi! Good morning! I am here at Longleaf Breeze, which is my parents' farm in Tallahassee, Alabama. And I'm here with my mom, Dr. Amanda Borden, who is an excellent farmer. And my dad, who is also an excellent farmer, and he is manning the camera. Thank Hello. you, Dad. Lee Borden and my mom, Amanda Borden. And we filmed Bloom Where You Are Planted in May, and we said we'd come back for part two. And here we are. I'm Adrian Borden, director of 50 Plus Ministries, and this is my mom, Amanda Borden. Hi. Welcome. Welcome to our garden. Uh, yes, a lot has changed. Some for the better, most of it for the better. Uh, some has gone through a great transition in a positive way and is now not looking so good. But I'm going to be very honest with you and tell you about all of it. So please come on in. All right, and so we'll go to the first bed, which right. is? These are squash plants, and I actually had some yellow squash, crookneck, and straightneck from those two plants for a while, and they, uh, as which you can see, plants? these two, these front two, right there, and that one, um, they are not producing anymore, and sad, and I have squash bug problems. Squash bugs are a problem in this area, um, because they, we have a lot of warm weather, they are able to keep reproducing in the uh, prolonged heat that we have. And so they've just been, and we're going to show you some squash bug eggs yes, in a few minutes. Yes, we may get to see some. Yes, we might get to see some. It's not a good thing, but it happens. Now, if you recall, my plan was to I put this newspaper down, uh, knowing that these plants were going to just develop and swarm all over and cover it up. That didn't happen this year. They've remained scrawny. And as a result... I have had some weeds come up, uh, and not to mention it doesn't look as great. This is chamber bitter, which is a, um, a weed that is uh, sometimes called gripe weed in this Hold area. I'm holding it still, and get, if you get a close-up, it has little seeds along the bottom. You, you would like to not shake that in your bed <laughs> because those come I'm off and they keep reproducing. Really still not shake it into the bed. <laughs> right, but... I will destroy this plant later. We're going to move on with the tour. But these are um, invasive weeds that are um, apparently uh, have a lot of friends in the area who've struggled with them. So uh, didn't keep all those out, although you can see that the newspaper actually, where it is covering, has done a good job. Now you might wonder, why don't you just pull up this unsightly mess? Well, look at those blossoms. If you can get a close-up of that. I still have hope of getting some. This, these are winter squashes down at this end, like butternut, which butternut does pretty well in our area here in central Alabama. So I'm leaving those. I'll put up with the way that looks if I can get some yeah, butternut you squashes. Got a pretty squash right there. Right. And I have actually, um, I didn't bring any samples down to show you, but I have uh, put about five or six of them in my root cellar already. One spaghetti squash and about five butternuts ready for to get over there. They never de did get very large though. So. We're well, that's okay. Maybe that one will be something. Okay. Next. May I suggest that we switch sides so that I'm, I'm so that y'all are better lit. Sure. So, the next bed we're going to visit is corn. Now, in early May or late, whenever you were here in May, it this corn was probably sort of yay high, intermediate. I can't remember. It wasn't very tall. Well, since then, that particular crop has it grew and it matured. It was what I I had planted what's called brocade corn which was a bicolor, and it was tender. You had some for 4th of July, remember? It was so delicious. It was delicious. It turned out great. I didn't have a big insect problem because I planted it early, and that was the key. They got ahead of the insects a little bit. So after we harvested all that and ate all that brocade corn, I didn't have any more of that seed, and I purchased some called G90 from my local feed and seed store. And that corn um, is, you can see already, by mid-August to... to early to mid-August already tall and has it's not tasseling yet but it will be before too long so and this will be corn no that's just the top of the stalk that's uh, but okay, no, okay it'll produce uh, the corn comes from and I wish I had some to show you that is tasseling but you it's where the silks you'll see the silks coming out um and um I may have a no I think I actually shucked all my corn I don't even have one to show but that after once you see it at that stage where you see it tasseling, in about three weeks, this variety of corn should be ready to harvest. So I'm hoping for a good crop 
prior to, and it, we should get it in plenty of time for any kind of freeze that we would have in this area. So we'll find out. I've actually not planted succession planting before. Uh, farmers do it all the time, but this is the first time I've done, you know, I finished one crop of corn. I'm just going to do another one, and we'll see how it works. All right, sounds good. Well, now let's move on to the tomatoes. We spent a good bit of time talking about the tomatoes last time you were here because most people, that's what they want to grow, or tomato plants, <laughs> and, and eat the tomatoes. Well, it's there's been some success here. I've had some really good tomato plants, uh, good tomatoes, and, um, the, and the plants aren't too in too bad a shape. They've grown a lot, but as you can see, they've sort of shut down. I'm not getting many. This um, Super Sweet 100, which is a transplant I bought, uh, did not start that one from seed. The others I started from seed. That one is pretty much finishing up. It's as a lot of people call it, fired up, <laughs> and um, it's. I'm just going to remove it when it's done. And what does fired up mean? It's a disease that can, you know, you don't want to get into all the late blights and early blights right now. We could do a, an entire video about that, but it's <laughs> it's something that um, once your plant has it, you should probably remove it and discard it. Don't put it in with, I probably shouldn't even be leaving it right there with the other plants right now, but I'm so greedy for food, I do. Um, <laughs> no, I, probably that will go in the next week or so. But my husband happens to love Super Sweet 100s, and that'll be a sad parting, I'm afraid. Oh. Um, so we're milking everything we can. But some of these are still, as you can see, I still have tomatoes growing. And yes. I, I have some that I've harvested that I'll show you after at the end of the video. I'm sorry, I'm not able to see. Oh, over on a table. There you see, go. he's still green, so I'm leaving him for a while. Um, and and I'm under the impression that once you have a little bit of blush, you can pick them? Yes. When they get to that stage, if, they, if I had seen any blush at all, um, I can do that. And you might wonder, well, why, why not just leave it until it's bright red? Well, critters. <laughs> exactly. And, and insects. Insects, insects. Insects and critters are a problem. I do have, I've seen birds out here, squirrels, rabbits, um, raccoons. You name it. <laughs> Deer can't get in, but just about anything else yes. can. Um, so, and I have some lovely basil that even after the tomato plants are finished, I'm going to leave that as long as I can until it freezes, and then I can I can save that, you know, dry it out or or freeze it for winter. Mm -hmm. Why and then plant basil? I plant that in with the tomato plants. Well, I would plant it. I love basil. I'd plant it anyway. But I interplant that and the marigolds in with the tomato plants to keep the hornworms down. Now, that's actually not a very good sign. Those are not good guys. <laughs> we'll get them off. This was my gardener's delight. It's a large cherry type tomato. Mm. And those have been really good. Um, but And you'll see a few of those I have to show you at the end of the video. But they're petering out too. It's not They're not um, producing blooms and hence not fruit the way they were. However, that plant doesn't look too bad. And I'm going to leave it until it, the freeze and see what we can get. Yeah. Um, it's been very hot, and sometimes tomato plants, tomatoes shut down in the heat. Mm -hmm. All right, this plant, this row, wasn't even here when you came before. You might recall that there were snap peas. Well, no, yeah, they were, they were, they were not, uh, they were English peas, like English peas. What's oh, I called, just ate them like sugar snaps. Yes, <laughs> well, they were sugar snaps. You're correct about that. I planted some sugar snaps and some shelling peas. They did great. That plant that I I ate all those. We harvested those. And then I planted in their stead uh, what we call southern peas. That's a generic term for black-eyed peas, which you see on the front of this row. And purple hull peas are also a southern pea. And as the name suggests, they grow really well in the south. And purple hull is certainly one that you can find at your local feed and seed very easily, even now. And you can plant these as late as July. Uh, but I planted these pretty soon after the spring peas were done in I'd say late May, early June, and it would it would be great to plant them even sooner. But because I put the trellis up to accommodate first the uh, uh, spring peas, first the English peas, and then the southern peas, I just in order to to make best use of our time and our trellis, do it this way, and it's been great. So let me show you these black-eyed peas. I've harvested some already. In fact, I've already cooked about three meals with them. have another bag of shelled peas ready to go in my refrigerator. And you might wonder, if you're not familiar with peas, if you are, you can just not worry about listening to this part. But if you're <laughs> black-eyed peas, th this is ready to harvest. Because look at that yellow, pale yellow color. And that should be pretty easy to shell, too. And uh, these really green ones I'm leaving. 
I want them as these pods filled out as much as possible. I see another one that might be ready. I mean, I, there are some I could get by with um, sh pick, picking today, but if I wait another day or two, I'll, they'll even be more ready. This one looks pretty good too. So those are my black-eyed peas. These are called California black eye. Hold it one one place so we can get a picture. No, the other one. The other one. Okay, you one like this you one better. Picked. Okay, so that's the black eye peas. Purple hull, as the name suggests, you want to wait until that hull is a nice dark purple color like that one over there, or there's some over here. Um, and I, I actually just harvested some yesterday, so there aren't a lot out here right now. But um, the, the vines might look kind of sad, and you might wonder, well, how can you put up with that? I'd tear those out. Well, <laughs> not as long as they're producing peas, I'm not going to. That's right. <laughs> and they are. I, they are doing well. So, in fact, they're doing much better than the peas I had last year in terms of insects. I don't want to put the mouth on myself, but um, okay. I had such... So show us why this one is not quite ready. All right, this one I would say is. It's nice and purple. That's whoop, good whoop, enough. Whoop, whoop. That's close slow, enough. Slow it. Hold it in one place. There you go. Okay. I would say, let's. this one's kind of modeled. You could pick that, but it's going to be much more difficult to shell, and it's just simply not going to be as large, mature a pea. Um, this one's sort of borderline, but see how it still has some green striation in there? I'm going to wait another day or two, keep checking it, and when it's purple, like this one, I'll pick it. Okay. Anybody who's grown up in the South, and if your grandmother made you shell peas the way mine did, I had a good old Montgomery grandmother. She... Uh, I got familiar with peas at an early age, but mm -hmm. I did not plant them until we moved out here. Mm -hmm. So that one also is ready. You think that one is too? Okay, sure. And I can come back later and pick four. I won't make this my only picking of the day. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to keep an eye on these babies because they, they'll ripen fast. Okay, this bed, before I, mm, I had planted some corn, I think, and it wasn't doing much, you didn't see much. We planted one pumpkin plant up at that corner. Well, see, I planted more here, and um, you can see that from this beautiful blue. Oh, well, look at the bee. Hey, I'm buddy. Always happy to see that. A pollinator, yay. Yeah. That's what they need in order to you produce do your pumpkins. Things. Don't yeah, let do us your thing. Yeah, don't, don't, <laughs> don't mind us. Don't mind us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what's interesting about this bed, I'll tell you one thing. Until about five days ago, it had corn large corn G90, which I planted, um, that we actually have been eating lately. <laughs> so it's gone, and I took all the, the stalks down. Those stalks had been artificially masking all this chamber bitter that you can see in the bed. And I would have weeded it before you came, except I wanted you to see. <laughs> Thank you. We want and to I'll see. I'll wait till a nice cool day to get out there and do it. But well, show um, me chamber bitter. Chamber bitter, well, you saw it earlier, but it's this plant. It's the same See the seeds, the telltale little seeds under there? Okay, so that was underneath, the, you know, completely covered up by, by those corn stalks I had. I didn't really see them. But I'm letting nature do a little of the shading for me and the help because those pumpkin that you can see that's nice and erect standing there, that really, they began to take on that habit after I took the corn out. So, now the reason for planting, you might wonder, well, why did you plant pumpkins in with corn to begin with? If you've ever heard of uh, an American Indian tradition called Three Sisters Gardening, they'll, you'll often plant corn and uh, some kind of member of the squash family, which pumpkin is a member of that family, and uh, beans, pole beans, climbing beans, together. Those are the three sisters. And the idea is the corn grows tall, the beans climb the corn, and the squash shades, spreads out and shades for weeds. Wow. Well, this year, and you can also do a two sisters. So I did, I tried the two sisters, and I, it worked pretty well. I was able to keep some of these um, squash vines out of the aisles so that Lee could mow, and, um, <laughs> and I would train them onto the corn. So when I took the corn out, I, I did have to be careful to not harm these vines. Um, but so that was working fine. Well, then I made an interesting discovery. Last year, 
I planted sweet potatoes in this bed and we, we thought we harvested them all. But apparently we didn't. <laughs> so look at th this vine. If you want to get a close up and there's some more over there. That's a sweet potato vine. And uh, what's happened is that whatever sweet potatoes we accidentally left in the soil sprouted and gave us some new sweet potatoes. <laughs> so I've oh, never funny. done this before. And I am just going to see what happens in terms of... Now, see that blossom right there? Focus on that beautiful lavender blossom. That's a sweet potato blossom. That's not a squash. Squash is yellow. That's sweet potato. In fact, look at the bed behind you and you'll see more. Those are all, those are all sweet potatoes over there. You can see those lovely lavender blossoms down at the end. Mm -hmm. And if you want to go over there with your camera. Uh, so that's what they're supposed to look like. <laughs> but uh, so we'll see... You know, if whether the harvest is damaged too much by having pumpkins um, planted in, I, what it looks like right now is I'm going to get more sweet potatoes at this end, and the pumpkin that's doing well is down at that end where you saw the blossom. Ooh. So we'll figure it out. Interesting. And well, so we probably won't come back while we're here. We'll just go ahead and talk about the sweet potatoes. Um, that I can't remember how much I had planted in May. Probably not much because I was late receiving my plants from a place I ordered them in North Carolina. They didn't come in until like, oh gosh, a week into May. No, the week after May was over. You hadn't received them when we filmed on May 7th. Right. Oh, well, you know what that means? Even though you'd rather plant in early May here in Alabama, in central Alabama, I didn't get them because they were coming from North Carolina until after that. So, But I had some that I had bought at... Um, a local feed and seed store here at this end of the bed. So that's why these are larger and I trellis them, which you can do with sweet potatoes. It makes it much easier if you've got um, a situation where you don't want them sprawling out on the ground. And uh, they do really, they do well. So these plants, I may have already planted then, I can't remember, but they were still really small. Mm -hmm. These came in, like I said, at the end of May, early June, and were just, they were um, like little stalks that you put in. They, you wouldn't have thought much of them. And then they started growing. They decided they liked it here. And now look at these vines. So um, even though these were, and so what might happen is these sweet potatoes will mature and be ready to harvest before the ones at this end of the bed. And I'll just have to be paying attention to that. We may harvest some. Are you okay? <laughs> I have a friend. Oh, you have a, sorry about that. Um, but anyway... So those are, those are sweet potatoes. All right, back to this. Do we need to switch sides again? Yes, please. Okay, let's talk about this bed. Um, when you were here before, I had planted a few little seeds, watermelon, and um, there's an Asian melon that I will not try to pronounce the name of it, except it's a lot like a cantaloupe. And I've planted them last year, and they were really good. So um, that's what I put in this bed. And I had trouble getting those seeds to even... They germinated just fine, but then as soon as they got any leaf on them at all, a critter would come and eat those leaves. I'm sure mm. they were very tender, and uh, probably, you know, I suspect a rabbit, a squirrel. We had a, those out here, as I mentioned. So, you see what it's turned into. They finally, I kept poking seeds in the ground, and finally I got some that germinated and didn't get eaten, and so now, look what we have. Yes, they're um, beautiful. And the melons are over there, so you can go ahead and show that. And they're still green. They're not ready to, to uh, pull yet. And you'll know because they uh, cantaloupe type or that, that type of melon um, will pull off the stem very easily when it's ready to be harvested. And, of course, it's usually more of a beige color. Uh, however, these watermelons, we've already harvested and eaten one of them. So. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> this, one, this is a yellow. It's, it has a yellow uh, flesh with beautiful black seeds. And this one, I'm thinking, we'll have. Would you like to stick around and have some watermelon with this? Uh, Absolutely. Work, this is over. Um, I'm sure, and I invite all of you. But <laughs> um, <laughs> she really will. She really does. But um, the reason I think this one's ripe is, first of all, the tendril at that blossom end has uh, turned brown and actually fallen off. It's the opposite of the stem, and on the underside, it's white. The the ground side where it's been lying on the ground. And then, I don't know if this is a full proof way to tell, but it has that hollow sound that you listen Sounds for. delicious. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Sounds like a watermelon. So um, anyway, that's what. And you have another one down here, I don't have you? Three more down there that are pretty much ripe too. Um, but I want to leave them, you know, so they can get even. Uh, the other one was really large, the first one I harvested. But you can see, same thing. The tendril is dried up, fallen off, white ground spot. So I think these babies are ready just about any time. And I'm purposely leaving the leaves kind of over them like that because um, I don't want them to get too much sun. To um, I've had some watermelon types in the past that split in the sun. So um, and it does get hot here. Now, with the uh, cantaloupe type melon or uh, those Asian melons, honeydew would be, it, that's more like a honeydew to me, which I prefer. Um, I put these little, when, they, when the melon first develops on the vine, I put these little squares of wood under them. And the idea is to prevent insects from burrowing under, from under the ground into the melon skin. Um, those skins are thinner than a watermelon skin. I don't do it for a watermelon, but for those types of melons, I do. And it works pretty well, so I just keep a lot of these little squares of wood on hand. Keep it close by. All right, we won't talk too much about these strawberries. They don't look good. We had a nice crop of strawberries this year, and we ate them. And, uh, and they were delicious. They were delicious. We didn't have enough to... Uh, I had to share them with the birds and the squirrels, unfortunately. We finally did put some netting over it, and that seemed to help. But... Uh, so we didn't do, you know, preserve any of them, but we did eat them and enjoy them. And now, since I'm planning to redo this bed anyway, we're just trying to keep it under control. This may produce some daughter plants for that I can take out of the ground and transplant for next year. Uh, but I do plan to get some new plants in the fall. I'll salvage what I can out of here because we're going to redo this whole area. So, um, but it was so overtaken with weeds, I just told Lee, let's weed eat it. <laughs> Not a really nice gardening thing to do, but we did. Um, all right, this bed right here, when you were here in May, there was garlic planted here still. Yes, still lots of it. A stand of garlic. And it was time to harvest that within a couple of weeks after you were here, so I did. And I'm now eating it and using it. Made bab uh, baba ganache with it. Yeah. Oh, yum. <laughs> and baba ganoush, I guess is what you would say. <laughs> um, and I made that yesterday and used some of my homegrown garlic. So that's what happened to that. But, and actually, we're going to, I guess we can give them the link to the video. Lee and I actually made a video about what we did with this area. <laughs> because I knew I wasn't going to plant anything Th that late in the summer right here by the time I pulled the garlic up so it was blank just and I, I know not to leave any bare soil so we decided to put cover crop in there that's what this is sun hemp it's an effective summer crop in our area so, uh, cover crop which means it will um, help to well this type of plant actually um, keeps the not only keeps the weeds down if you can get a thick enough stand but it actually will um put, provide nitrogen to the soil point out the sun hemp again for me that's please. this plant right here that's the sun hemp mm -hmm. and you, most people think of cover crops and they know about winter rye and crimson clover those are fall cr cover crops and you'll see those you do, this would be much too early to plant those mm -hmm. so i chose this well unfortunately it didn't germinate very well and it also had competition from the chamber bitter. You've already seen that. It was all inter intermixed with it. And so I gave up, gave up on it and decided, well, what I really need to do is solarize it and kill the weeds. Mm -hmm. So this is a, if, if you all haven't heard about solarization, this is some six mil plastic that we purchased at our local um, garden shop. Actually, we got it at the hardware store because that's what they had. And uh, you put that down. During the summer month, you really need a lot of sun. It wouldn't work as well in the winter. But if I wanted to kill the weeds completely, it would take about three months. But just to weaken them enough to pull them up easily from the soil, I can do that in a week or two weeks or three weeks. I mean, I, I've left it on for several weeks now. And because I still see some green under there, I'm planning to continue a little bit longer. The, the trick is to get this plastic out before it... If, you left, if I left it for three months, it would probably just be in pieces, and I'd have little tiny pieces of plastic all over my bed, which I don't Ugh. want. So um, I, that's the plan here. And after that, if I leave it long enough, it'll be time to plant some fall vegetables, like kale or something. Yay, all right, we love kale. Yeah, now let's talk about the back half of this bed. 
This is something new that we didn't plant at all, and I really did not know what I was going to do with it when you were here before. But one of our master gardeners had a plant sale, and somebody had a couple of squash transplants that I bought, and I thought, where am I going to put those? I put them here. <laughs> they produced some beautiful, I had one straight neck and one yellow crook neck, beautiful squash. I've made several squash casseroles. I've got some to show you over there. But I've here. enjoyed some of those squash casseroles, and they were yummy. Thanks. Well, they... They did really well for a while, and then I noticed that even from this plant that's still pretty healthy, that um, just as the hot summer went on, I was they were attacked more and more by uh, insects that got into the actual squash fruit. Mm -hmm. So, and I had to discard it. I actually, gave some of it to my chickens. They liked it, but I, <laughs> <laughs> um, so this plant's okay. But look what's happened to this one. This plant that looks has mottled looking leaves like this, and here's your close up, Lee. It's been attacked nice by squash bugs. And the reason I can tell, well, for one thing, I can tell what it's done to the leaves. But also, those are squash bug eggs Ugh. destined to develop into baby squash bugs, <laughs> which yeah. will damage my plant. They're, uh, so what I do when I see them, I don't mind squishing insects. I'm going to take that plant out soon anyway. I just squish them up in my hand. They are gone. And there's more... On that. Thing. Yeah, now this one, I'm, I'm trying to get, rescue this plant before it's, although it, there's probably not much point in it because I don't think I'm going to get many healthy squashes from it. But just because I don't want to encourage squash bugs to, to live here. Right. I've done that. Um, so that's the, those are these. I planted some tomato plants here. I actually had a few of my transplants that looked pretty good. And um, this one, this is a great example of what a tomato hornworm will do to a plant. I actually never saw the hornworm. That's what's amazing. I can usually find them. But they're good at camouflage. If you've ever dealt with hornworms before, you know what I'm talking about. And I think you showed a bit in your video yes. last time. Yes. Um, so this one was attacked, but I'm leaving it just to see what happens. I'll probably take it out later this week. It looks kind of unsightly. So you haven't pulled anything off this plant? No, I didn't do that. That was all an insect. That's crazy. Yeah. That one, on the other, other hand, is doing really well, and I've actually had one little tomato from it, but it's it's not, you can see a few blossoms at the top, so I'm hopeful about it. There's another one, a tomato plant. It's not doing great, um, but it's it's there. So it may, and again, since I, I think we might possibly get tomatoes up until the freeze, so I'm leaving it. Um, what has done pretty well is look at that eggplant plant. I mean, it was tiny when I put that in, and it's, it's doing really well. I have some marigolds here. I have some basil hidden back there to, to help protect my tomato plants. But unfortunately, neither of those did a good job of keeping the hornworm away, so I don't know, I don't know what to make of that. Um, this is some lemon basil that I put there, and it's doing really well. So this is sort of a hodgepodge bed, but, you know, it is something to... And I don't know exactly what will become of it, as I said, but... Um, I'll plant some fall, fall plants eventually. Okay, um, let's move over here. I don't need to say a whole lot about this bed except it's my perennial bed. So I have some herbs in here. I have some pennyroyal. I have chives. And the chives, you can see, are sending up beautiful little They're pretty. seeds here and, and that are opening into flowers. So those reseed beautifully. You can see I have lots of chives, but Lee and I eat a lot of chives. We don't, you know, we don't ever have a baked potato that doesn't have chives on it from the mm -hmm. garden. So I don't mind that. And, it, and it's better than weeds, right? And it's kind of pretty. Oh, I like it. Um, this is turmeric. You can see it's doing really well. It is gorgeous. And I have not thinned it in, well, since I planted it. So probably this fall it's overdue for pulling up some turmeric. And I'll share some with you. You can mm -hmm. make tea. I it's anti-inflammatory. Yes, there's so many good things, uh, healthy reasons to use turmeric. And it tastes good, so. Mm -hmm. um, but that's it's done really well here. Um, I have a beautiful black and blue salvia. Attracts um, beautiful um, Let me catch up. insects. Okay, oh, yeah. Yes. Come, he may have to come on this side. Come on this side. Yeah, this attracts pollinators. Good. Yes, and it's, mm. yeah, isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. And then I did, I have an invasive plant here, but a lot of people like it. Kava kava. It has some uses. Uh, now, pick one of those white stems that you see picking. One of these? Up. Yes, pick one of those. Okay. And then just take a whiff. It smells like licorice, like 
It does smell. Anise, is that? Yeah, I would say. Is that, yeah. So it's um, for those people who really love that smell, that mm. might be a good plant to put in. <laughs> yeah, you want to just get a good whiff. And there are a few zinnias <laughs> over there, which came, which reseeded from last year. Dad can get the close-up of that. So even though I didn't plant any, they just came back. <laughs> <laughs> they just wanted to be here. Yeah, they wanted to be. All right, this plant is, these are pole beans, and I actually had some really good pole beans from them for a while. You had some at 4th of July lunch, as yes, I recall. Yes, it was good. And um, let's see, I think every now and then I find a little random bean like that. In fact, I'll go ahead and pick that one. Can you see it? No, slow down. I'm not expecting to get another meal's worth of beans out of these, but I do think um, I can put these in with the stir fry as I find them. So that that um, end of the bed is pretty much done, but it's all on the same trellis with these other beans down here that I'll tell you about, so I'm not doing anything with that right now. I'll just leave it. But these are lima beans. This is a type uh, called Christmas lima. And... Uh, just a particular, oh good, here's one that I will pull today. Slow down, slow down, slow down. This one is, and, and really they're still good even if they're, the um, hole has turned brown like that. Mm. But I know it's ready. Oh, and this one too, yeah. Look. Here, let's show it on the camera. Um, you see it? No. So several of these are ready and I can come back and get the others later. But, yeah, see, all of those. Okay. And I'll, t I'll show you um, a lima bean pod that's not ready to harvest. Uh, okay. This one, you can see they're not filled out at all. But that's, so when you see those, don't pick that yet. Okay. Wait till it looks like this. Or okay. it might even still be green, but just wait till you can feel in there. Because what happens when you open it, you want them to look, <gasps> see, aren't oh, those pretty? Oh, they are beautiful. Christmas lima. I guess they remind you of Christmas. <laughs> I guess so. Those are awesome. They're and, beautiful. And in my experience, I've gotten a good crop of these even in the fall. Uh, for some reason, they do better. The ones I've planted, I've, I, I leave, I'm going to leave this here until I'm confident that they have finished producing. Okay. So, um, but all right. Well, let's move on to the peppers. Okay. Now, we come on this side of the bed? Yes, Please. probably. Yes, we'll switch okay. sides. All right. So... When you were here before, I had just planted some transplants that I purchased um, at my yes. local feed and seed, banana peppers and cayenne. Um, and the other peppers are all some that I started from seed. But um, what's gone on is, of course, these have done beautifully. Uh, and the, in fact, the banana peppers did so well that I've um, <laughs> made... <laughs> they love it here. Yes, they love it here. And they turned a beautiful shade of red. They weren't hot. They were just regular banana peppers. No, yeah, we, we've been enjoying them, and they're beautiful, and they're, they are. They're like banana pepper flavored, but they're red. Yeah, and you know, but you, you can harvest them before they're red. I mean, I've harvested some large yellow ones, too. But So they were great, and I, in fact, I had enough to make 13 or 14 jars of pepper jelly, which we'll show you some after this is over. And I put some cayenne pepper in with it just to give it a bit of a little bit of a zing. And that is bright red. And aren't those pretty? I've actually made pepper sauce with that, and you'll see that, a, a sample of that as well at the end. These little guys, well, here's, these are jalapenos on your side. You can see a close-up, if you want to, of a jalapeno. Um, they're not v as far along as they should be because all of these that I had started from seed, the jalapenos and these sweet peppers, um, were close to, when, when I still had them, in a tray and watering them when they were still just, um, you know, before being planted, they were still being cared for outside the bed. Um, they were exposed to a tomato plant that I purchased from a garden shop. I won't mention where I got it. And um, it was diseased. I did not realize at the time, but I'm pretty sure it had a disease. Well, peppers and tomatoes are in the same family. They're nightshades. And so I'm, I fear that those peppers, because they never looked the same, they were, uh, and I lost a lot of them. Um, but e every th time one would die, I would just keep planting another one. I had a lot, fortunately. But you found a surprise today. <laughs> but I found a surprise, and I don't know whether you can see it over on that side. I may have to come. There's a little bell pepper. My first one. Green. Green bell pepper. 
growing in the garden. You found it, right? Yeah, he found Good. it. Good. And uh, I just discovered that this morning because I just kind of given up on these guys. I do see blooms and on all of them now, so I'm hopeful I'll get lots of bell peppers. Especially now that we see that little guy. I know. I'm happy. Uh, lemon basil, it's doing really well. These eggplants, um, <laughs> <laughs> the leaves are beginning to look kind of sad. You might think, oh, well, why don't you pull those up? Well, because they're still producing eggplants. So Lots like, of eggplants. Like, look at that beautiful Lestata de Gandia, that lavender mottled. If you on, can, I've got to get it out. Yeah, let me the move the leaf. There we go. You see that? Pretty, huh? I love these. And most of these other eggplants... Because of the color, there they should not be that faded white and yellow. However, the eggplant's still perfectly good in there. But um, at the beginning of the season, when they first started producing, they were beautiful purple, and now they're just getting more faded looking. So, you know, it's time to harvest these and use them. That's why I made baba ganoush. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there we are. But these are a nice and nice size. These are long purple. Is the type uh, is the name of this. This variety and the others, Lestata de Gandia. And that's all I planted. But I started all of these from seed, put them in the ground. And you know, we had a cool spring. It took a while for um, eggplant to even want to be outside. Mm -hmm. It's it's particularly sort of like sweet potatoes. I like they like it warm. So <laughs> um, here they are. Well, we've seen the sweet potatoes. This is simply a bed of asparagus that I'm not even trying to weed at this point. I should because they actually don't like competition from weeds. But um, and I will, but at some point when they turn brown, we'll, we cut those down with the hedge trimmer and let them overwinter. But we are thinking of moving that asparagus bed um, during the off season, so that's another reason we're not really concerned too much about what's happening with it right now. We'll probably plant some new asparagus. Okay. Okay. The cucumbers. When you were here before, we planted, I think, one little lone cucumber up there in the uh -huh. corner, and it was it was small. Well, they, they took over. They've had a great run. I've made three different batches of pickles. I'll show you some examples of what I did. And now I'm still getting some cucumbers. Like, here's one that's still green. It does, I am having some damage, and there's a rabbit that's been coming around, so I don't know. Peter Rabbit. And I'm Aww. Mr. McGregor's. <laughs> but um, anyway, so I'm still getting some that look green like that, which is good. But I'm There's also one down here that are yellow. She's yeah. also getting some that are yellow. Here's one. So, you know, I just, it, yes, if you're willing to sort through your cucumbers and find the ones that are still good, um, then I'll still get some. And I'm, that's why I'm not pulling all of this up. But you can see that it's it's not in its heyday, this bed. And I'm sorry you didn't see it when it was because it was... I just came in and just couldn't keep up the cucumbers. Mm -hmm. So I gave you a lot of cucumbers. Yeah. We ate a lot of cucumbers, and I canned a lot of cucumbers. I've been eating a lot of cucumbers, yes. and I'm not sad about it. Right. So I'm happy with what I've gotten from that bed. Okra. Again, when you were here before, I think we had one little okra plant seed that we put in the ground right up there at the front of the bed. And look at this now, this stand. Um, and you can do a close-up of any okra. You should be able to find some. <laughs> Are you looking for some green okra? Just looking around. Okay, here's one. I see that beautiful okra blossom. And then right that behind it, look at that. In fact, I have my clippers here. I can clip that okra. Hang on, I want to see it first. Yeah, okay. You see? And that's a good size. Some of these, I, I'm, I've been pleased with these. This is red burgundy. Will it stay red? Not when it's cooked. It turns green. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, none of the red okras stay red when, when cooked. But they, it is pretty when you're first cutting them up. Uh -huh. <laughs> and these are, they're nice and tender. One thing I've been pleased about, I have Clemson spineless cow horn and red burgundy. And that's the cow horn. Even though that's, it's funny because it's not... I planted cow horn last year, and they were, they were sort of curly like a cow horn. Uh -huh. This year's have just been like that, a lot, slightly curved maybe, but you know, <laughs> yeah. no, no big cow horn to them, but they've been good. And then the Clemson spineless is at the very front of the bed. But what I was going to say is that I've been pleased that when I've been a, on moments when I've been a bad gardener, and I have not picked them daily, uh, which you're supposed to 
get out here and pick them daily because okra will keep on giving if they're well picked. Um, and when I haven't done that and I've gotten a big one that I thought, surely that's over the hill, I think I've only had to throw away or give to the chickens one okra wow. this season. So here's a good example. I'm just going to get through the jungle here. This one's too big. I should have gotten that earlier. Hang on. Let me see it. Okay. I'm going to pull it off so you can see it. How's that? How's that? Can you see it? All right, that one I should have harvested earlier. Hold it real still. But I bet you dollars to donuts that'll still be good, mm -hmm. cut up in gumbo or stew or just you know. Or um, stir -fry. the the Indian way that we've prepared okra on our video that you'll see on August seventeenth. Oh yes, I need to I need to learn that since it's I'll called still have August. I'm it's called so. bindi masala. B H I N D I, and it's delicious. Oh, I can't wait. I should still have okra August 17th, so that'll be good. Yay! So, anyway, you can see that this is done well, and this is the Clemson Spineless, which is probably the most popular variety planted in this area, and it does well. But there's a good bit of that that I need to come back. I can see right now, I need to clip that today. Um, so, that's the okra, and then this is just my herb bed that I've allowed my Hot lips, sage to get too large, and uh, let my, but the fennel. Let me tell you about the fennel real quickly. Uh, in fact, oh yes, we can do a close up. Yeah. One reason I plant fennel, you can eat it, and it's you know we can use it as a spice. Do you see all those little insects? Yes, those on green those? crawlies. You want to attract them because they're the caterpillar of. I think it's the swallowtail butterfly, or is it the monarch? I'll fact check on that. I, I, for some reason, I can never keep that straight. But they are, um, you want them. They're good guys. The first time I ever planted fennel, I didn't know that. And I took them off. And I, they met their demise. But now I plant it so that I, they do have. So see how they've stripped this one bare? That's okay. And this, is, this fennel came back from last year. So, um, so you harvest the fennel and then you want the bugs to come? I didn't harvest any of it. I, I will tell you, I've used oh, it more as okay. a as an attractant for that um, caterpillar. Okay. okay. Yeah, I don't. But I guess if I used fennel a lot in cooking, I would plant just plant enough of it that the mm -hmm. they uh, they could have some and I could have some. Well, they're having a big old time on yeah. that plant. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bunch of so them. So I'm doing my part for butterflies, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I had to hitch it to that post stake it because it had just gotten so out of hand um, but yeah so that's the second year in a row I've had good success and I did get a couple of good close-ups of that of one of those caterpillars if you want to use that later oh, I'll send it to you um, so and I have again more chives plenty of chives lemon balm all kinds of good things here uh, well let's before we wrap it up completely show what we have on our display table here it's not a lot but I wanted you to see some samples this is uh, what the squash, that was a crook neck that I got from the plant before it started getting such infestation of insects. And a straight neck there. These are some tomatoes that I grew on those plants. And you can see that I did pull them before they were completely ripe, as you said, when it was still in the breaker stage or mm -hmm. when it's just barely has a blush. And then um, these are some of the Gardener's Delight large cherry tomatoes. Those are beautiful. I know, and they, I really love them. They're sweet. Um, and then this is some pepper sauce that I made. I just used apple cider vinegar, put it on the cayenne peppers. I cut the, the stems off and everything and poured that on. And then pepper jelly. Now this was made from, as we mentioned, banana peppers and cayenne. Some of the, most of the, I would say three-fourths of the banana peppers had turned red. Okay. And then some were just regular greenish yellow. yellow. Mm -hmm. um, and then red cayenne. So here, and it's not terribly hot. Not hot enough for him, unfortunately. <laughs> not hot enough for my beloved either. Yeah. And then, oh dear, I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> he'll just have to add a dash of sriracha or something. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then these are some uh, bread and butter pickles that I grew. Or, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I grew the cucumbers, but that I made, you know, canned. And this is kosher dill. Same thing that we canned a couple of weeks ago. Mm. So we love mama's bread and butter pickles yes. on our sandwiches. Well, I didn't make these quite as sweet as I have before, so I hope you'll like them. They're a little tart. I'm sure we'll love them. I like them. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, what is that thing? They're not tart? They're, no, they're 
They're sour. they're they're sour. Okay. I think they taste good. You can sample okay. one. How about okay. that? Okay. You can make your own decision. <laughs> so um, so anyway, that's basically what I have to show. I awesome. think. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for letting us come back today and get I'm a tour of of the progress that was made, and for letting us see warts and all what happens because <laughs> you know nature takes over. It's not necessarily in your hands all the time. It's not, and that's one thing that I try to do with. I try to make this somewhat of a demonstration garden for people that if they want to come and learn what to do, what not to do, and what happens to, when you're not using any kind of pesticides or herbicides, I'm completely orga beyond organic. It's like just let nature take its course. Mm -hmm. And I do need to get out and weed some of those beds and that kind of thing. But I don't, um, if you don't really want to do, you know, a lot of intervention <laughs> with your gardening, then... I try to show people what I can do, and that's the best I know to do. But I hope that you'll all come visit in person sometime when I, everything clears up and we can do that. Yeah. We'd love to have a tour out here. Yeah, we could have a little 50-plus cookout. Dad some, can grill some burgers. That'd be fun. We've um, enjoyed some of these tomatoes, and we hope to grow tomatoes in our new garden. Russell and I have bought, we're in the process of buying a house. We're getting married in September, and we're buying a house, because you do the same, do them at the same time, right? Yeah. Um, you you know. should, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, we will have a garden that has literally nothing to begin with, and we'll be building from the bottom up. So maybe we can come back get you back out there for another episode on there we'll see that'd be fun yeah well thanks for joining us today everybody and if you have any questions please comment on the video or send them to me a borden at fumcmontgomery.org and we'll see you soon take care